Here's how I'm going about bottom balancing Calb cells. They're 100 amp hours a piece, nominal of 3.2 volts. The first time you actually use them, you should bottom balance them, meaning that you should take all of the cells that you plan on using and bring them down under load to 2.5 volts each, and then you let them rest for 24 hours. They should come back up to 2.5. 7.5 to 2.85 or so. After which, the next day when they do recover to 2.7 to 2.85, again you pull them down to 2.65 and then you let them uh, rest for you know a half hour or so and you keep pulling them down until they're about 2.65 there. What this does is it brings all of the batteries in sync at the very bottom of their capacity and this allows you to hook them up in series and you charge them up to 3.5 volts each times however many you have in series so in my case I have 16 cells times 3.5 comes up to 56 volts uh, once all these are bottom balanced here I will have my charge controller charge them up to 56 volts and it'll cut off there at 0.05 C. What it does is it holds a voltage at 3.5 and in order to do that once it starts getting full the voltage will go up so it has to reduce the current the amps in order to maintain that and then once it hits 5 amps it is basically uh, full and then it'll turn off and you'll have a full battery bank. What bottom balancing is doing here is it takes off the sharp corners of the charge cycle. You start to discharge them below I think two and a half volts they quite readily plummet from there and it'll be a runaway and you'll end up killing them. Also the charge graph of these is pretty linear until you get above I think it's like 3.6 3.7 or something and once you get to that point then it the voltage is just simply shoot straight up. Pretty much at the top there really isn't all that much energy anyway and you get a bunch of uh, issues as far as uh, overcharging or discharging your uh, batteries and stuff which is about the only concerns you have with these uh, type lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, in my case I don't really need uh, every last little bit out of them uh, nor is it advantageous so we'll be uh, cutting off the part at the bottom where everything just uh, falls out of the sky and the very top of it where it shoots straight up and you don't really get much for it anyway. By doing that it doesn't matter that even though the cells probably have come from the same batch uh, even though they're nominal uh, 100 amp hour cells uh, one might have 95 and one might have say 115 amp hours and it keeps them uh, all balanced at the bottom which takes off the the jagged bits at the very top which means that your 115 amp hour cell uh, won't end up killing your uh, 95 amp hour cell. What we have here is four resistors at 0.5 ohm uh, each and each one is 50 watts. So I have all the one side and resistors are non-polarity. So I'm just using this one for the negative. So you got all these sides uh, parallel you know, all tied together there on the negative and then all the other side is connected together and that is going to my positive on the battery. When you go 0.5 ohms divided by the 4 you're looking at 0.125 ohms 
and you're adding the 50, 100, 150, 200 watts. Uh, so you're basically creating a 0.125 ohm at 200 watts in the spec sheet that I got from EVTV. They said to give it a, a gradual pull down discharge of about 30 amps, which seems like a lot, but uh, these batteries uh, do 3C continuous, so this 100 amp hour battery will do 300 amps continuous and it'll do 1,000 amps uh, for 15, 20 seconds. Here's a piece of aluminum that I got at this electronic salvage shop where they just take all these parts from computers and motors and things and wherever the heck they've managed to find them. You got about five, six bucks each. And then you got uh, two bucks in wire for the four feet of 10 gauge. And then you got six bucks for this aluminum heat sink here. Less than 30 bucks you can build yourself a little uh, discharge thing to uh, bottom balance your batteries which essentially is pocket change when you figure that you get rid of all the headaches of one cell trying to kill the other. You can see I'm using my Simpson tie which is for the 6x6 posts and that is coupled to the aluminum heat sink it's dissipating it into this bed of concrete, which is keeping this thing a lot cooler than it was just sitting in the in the air. I can, can, a little hot, and you can actually feel it rating a heat down there. Just a recap here: the cells originally came out at. 3.308 for this cell. They're all pretty close there. I'm initially discharging each cell to 3, or excuse me, 2.5 volts each, and then I'll give them a 24 hour period, let them recover, and they'll recover, I think, between 2.75 and 2.85. Uh, after that recovery period, I'll put another load on them, bring it back down to 2.65 volts, and once they're there, and they're all there, I'll give them a half hour, and just keep keep doing that until they're all that, and then they should be uh, pretty much balanced, and then from there I can charge them up to 3.5 volts each, but I'll string them uh, in series, and I'll let my charge controller and the sun uh, charge them back up. So I got 16 cells at 3.5 volts each would bring them to 56 volts.